Good morning, Midland, Texas. Uh, I got a little video I'm going to do for you today uh, based on a Facebook post that I did called uh, uh, Life Insurance Books. And one of the motives for murder, and, and that's the, the why question. Uh, you know, uh, why did they uh, come to your home, cut your phone line, shoot you, listen to you, scream for help? You know, and, and, and what's the answer to that? I mean, the, the facts are clear. I wasn't shot with my gun. So we know somebody came to my home and shot me. Facts are clear that I'd reported multiple burglaries before I was shot. I was shot during a burglary. There's been burglaries since happening. It's been massive career corruption and um, and obstruction of justice what's been going on but just to focus on 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 this one thing on the life insurance books I, I'm gonna uh, go over and, and I've got it laid out in a Facebook post that I did this morning called uh, life insurance booklets and I did this uh, just this one short uh, Mimi here that said the ex called me after I left divorce court and asked if I had called the insurance company and switched the beneficiaries yet. Okay. And, and, uh, and so that was just a headliner, just the opening statement there, which was a fact, you know, it, it, this was a fact. I left divorce court and, and by the time I got home, the ex wife called me and asked me if I'd switch beneficiaries over yet. Okay. And, and I'm going to explain that more. And, and so I'm just going to go over what I wrote here, and then this will tell the story. It's really, you know, it, it, it'll make a lot more sense. And then I back all this up with evidence like I normally do. You know, here's this court document, and he, you know, here's this piece of evidence, etc. Okay. And so, life insurance books. We separated from a three month marriage on December 30th, 2011, less than a month before I was shot, and the ex wife took my life insurance books at this time without my knowledge. Okay. I found out they were gone when she brought them back a couple of weeks before the murder attempt, along with filled out divorce papers. I filed for divorce five days before the murder attempt, but it wasn't final, so she was still the primary beneficiary, okay? And then I believe the law, you know, basically says you can't move money, change anything until the divorce is final. Final. So legally, I don't think I had it, you know, I, I couldn't have changed, took her off as the beneficiary until the divorce was final anyway. And so... Uh, the fact that I filed meant nothing. So some people have suggested that she brought them back so she wouldn't have possession of them when I happened to die by accident. Okay, and, and you know, and, and so uh, if I would have died, you know, when they come to my home, cut my phone lines and shot me, and then her friend ruled this a murder, an accident, then uh, uh, if they checked, she wouldn't have, she wouldn't have had possession of the books because she brought them back to me. And that's when I found out that she'd taken them. I didn't know she'd taken them. Okay. When we separated, less than a month far shot. These books show that if her lifelong friend, MPD Detective Rosa Rodriguez, would rule my murder an accident, then she'd get around $650,000 in cash and assets instead of getting nothing from a short marriage ending under allegations that she's working with the prostitution ring. I paid for an AD&D policy, which was an accidental death and dismemberment benefit that would add two years pay and $250,000 if I happened to die by accident before the divorce was final. That was in the books that she took. Okay, The big prize was my paid-for home, which people have said had, multiple people have said, had tunnels under it and it's near a million-dollar underground facility, actually four three-bedroom homes, costing a million each, that's suspected of hosting prostitution, the, the, the Permian Basin and international also prostitution parties and also the woman on the phone was recorded saying pedophile parties okay and it looks like one is in my backyard if y'all seen that my phone lines were cut before i was ambushed and shot from point blank range uh, by somebody under my home i crawled out on my hands and knees to save my life. This failed murder was ruled an accident by her friend, by her lifelong friend she went to, to elementary and junior high with, and the case was closed by her friend that she went to elementary school with. That was Detective Rosa Rodriguez. Now, Rosa Rodriguez, the one met me at the 7-Eleven when I crawled out and then said she wasn't there, and then... Uh, uh, and then I've recently found proof showing they were lying because April Chandler said she's the one that met me at the 7-Eleven. But uh, because of the newly found police report, it shows that uh, April Chandler was lying about where she's at and when she was there. And so it proved that Chandler and Rodriguez were lying, which I knew that all along because Rodriguez, her friend, called into my truck at 7-Eleven after I shot. Two months after the murder attempt on March 26, 2012, we went to divorce court and it was made final. 
when I got home from court that day, I got a call on my company cell phone number 432-209-6494 from her asking if I called the insurance company and switched over the beneficiaries yet. But I had, but I called them as soon as I left. The phone records will show this call. And that's the reason I put the number there. You know, I, I'm all for legitimate law enforcement going, well, let's check Buddy's story out. Let's check them phone records out. See if she did call. Well, she did call because old Buddy's story is checked out and checked out and checked out and checked out and checked out. This is a premeditated for profit capital time to murder all kinds of evidence back to the story some people have suggested that there would be a last minute hail mary and i would and i would have had an accident on purpose and died that day if i hadn't have called them okay and and so and then she would still have been the beneficiary you see she called me and asked had i called the insurance company Okay, I was telling my brother's wife, Mitzi Webb, about these insurance books on a phone call after I shot, and she told me that she saw my books while they were gone from my home in that three-week period. I don't know how, when, or where, but I'm sure of her saying this. <clears throat> and so somebody could ask Mitzi that because she told me that on the phone. She saw these books. She can verify that the ex-wife took them during that period, okay? Eight months after the murder attempt, I was contacted by Arthur Welch, who told me that he was dating the ex-wife during this time. He asked me if I thought she had something to do with the shooting, and I told him that I thought she was out of town at the time, but she knew who did it. He then told me that he thought she had a lot to do with it from the things she said, and she threatened to have him killed, too. Okay. And then that's not a, he said, that, you know, Buddy said, that, Arthur said that. I've got a copy of it. My attorney submitted a copy of this conversation into evidence at the protective order hearing in December 2013. She did confirm under testimony that Arthur was her ex-boyfriend. Now, if you remember, the protective order hearing that she filed uh, was 18 months after the murder attempt. I hadn't seen her, talked to her in a year and a half, and she lived over 100 miles away. Some people just thought that was absurdity to have a protective order for somebody you hadn't even seen or talked to in a year and a half. It's based on two non-threatening emails sent in a year and a half. And um, But anyway, a copy of that conversation with Arthur Welch, where, and I'm going to show you a, a, a picture of it here in a minute. I just recently saw in the police report from the night of the murder attempt, which had been withheld from me for seven years. Okay, that's what causes secret police because I, I had pictures of police and I didn't have a police report showing that they were here because they were illegally withholding that police report from me, even after it was subpoenaed. You know, it was subpoenaed before court and it was withheld. And, and now we know why, because it was proven the lies and, and you know, and, and I'm going to go on here that M MPD Midland Police Department officer, Matt Davis tried to call my ex-wife two times an hour after I seen crawling out. I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you proof of that here in a minute. Too. Matt Davis was the MPD officer that mysteriously quit the police force on the same month as a protective order hearing after only 12 years. And some people have wondered if the reason he quit is because, uh, I, you know, my attorneys pulled that that document out where her former boyfriend said that he believes she had a lot to do with with the shooting from the things she said, and she threatened to have him killed too. And then, and then all of a sudden it. it people got to figure it out maybe mad davis had something to do with this murder attempt and he quit you know that's unknown but but what we do know is matt davis was at my house and i'm gonna tell you there in a minute the report showed that he was at my home at 1103 but he wasn't seen on camera woodward and naylor were seen arriving at 1101 p.m but they were the only ones this told me that matt was under my home and i was ambushed and shot by somebody under my home and he wasn't the only one davis dickie chatwell angel and hell that five police officers they were listed as being at my home uh before my security cameras were disabled and they wasn't seen arriving they wasn't seen going in the door that told me they were under my home and uh and and keep in mind that woodward the first one showed up was a sheriff from a different county he was from martin county and mike mike naylor is the sheriff deputy in midland that died in the mysteriously died in the line of duty in 2014 or maybe maybe better words conveniently died because now he can't ask any he can't answer any questions about being the secret police at my house after this premeditated murder tip. A former resident, Ricky Ronaldo, told me that him and his brother used to go in the tunnels under my home when they lived here. Former resident of my home. And and so multiple people have said there's tunnels underground facility here. So then so then we uh, I do the comments and, and basically I back up the statements with proof, you know. Uh, we separated from three month marriage December thirty less than a month before I shot and the ex wife took my life and should book that it's time without my knowledge. 
Okay. And that's what I, I said. As can be seen on the police report from December 20th, 2011, five weeks before the murder attempt, it says they will be separating. That was like the straw broke the camel's back. The ex-wife had called the police on the night and I was put in the back of the police car, which already had a baggie of marijuana laying in the seat. I was then threatened by the police who told me they better not be called back again for this stuff, which was a repeated burglary thefts I believe were connected with prostitution. After the police left, the ex-wife tells me, we're creating a document trail on you. And Danny said that we'll just take your house. This happened 10 days after, before she moved out and five weeks before I was ambushed and shot. Burglar alarms were going off before I was shot, but I didn't call the police because I'd been threatened with being framed by these corrupt police from that night. Their names were Blake Bush and Trent Sellers. Obviously, my murder was planned weeks in advance, which explains the document trail comment. My guess is they created a document trail on the last homeowner before he died by accident. And that's another story on Mike Lawhon, but remember... When I first looked at this house, they told me he was incarcerated for drugs. I had no reason to question, and I would never think that police framed him, put him in the back seat of a car that had a baggie of pot in there, and then they were creating a document trail so that they could murder him. I would have never suspected that. Okay, here's the date, 1220. Someone has been getting in the house. Okay, that's what he's saying that. Yes, that's what's happened. Blake Bush, Trent Sellers, this is 1220-11, and they will be separating outside the house, you know. And, and and one thing's interesting here, if you look at this last comment on there, that's the night I shot. They come back and put a reference comment here, uh, just, uh, you know, within an hour after me being shot. I got a video on this right here, uh, where, where they, I believe this was the document trail right there. And so, first comment. Second comment. I found out they were gone when she brought them back a couple weeks. That was the life insurance books. And before the murder attempt, along with filled out divorce papers, I filed for divorce five days before the murder attempt, but it wasn't final, so you're still the primary beneficiary. That's what it said above. Some people suggested that she brought them back so she wouldn't have possession of them when I happened to die by accident. These books show that if her lifelong friend, MPT detective Rosa Rodriguez, would rule my murder an accident, then she would get around $650,000 in, in cash and assets instead of getting nothing from a short marriage ending under allegations that she was working with a prostitution ring. I paid for an AD&D policy which was an accidental death and dismemberment benefit that would add two years' pay and $250,000 if I happened to die by accident before the divorce was final. That was in the life insurance booklets. This is a screenshot, okay? And at the top, I say accidental death added a, a half million. I have a basic accidental death and a supplemental accidental death, and it adds two times annual base pay and $250,000 employee and, and, and family. So basically, the books that she took without my knowledge, right, you know, less than a month before I'm ambushed and shot in this murder attempt, showed that if, if my murder was ruled an accident by her lifelong friend, it would add almost a half million dollars to, to the existing uh, million of assets, okay? <clears throat> and then in court, before we go to court, we notice that Detective Rosa Rodriguez is sitting over there with the ex-wife, all buddy buddies, and my and my attorney, you know, uh, just asked out of the blue in court, do y'all know each other? And two years later, come to find out, oh, they're lifelong friends, childhood buddies. They went to elementary and junior high. This was a question in court. Are you familiar with the ex-wife? Uh, yes, ma'am. How do you know her? I've known her. We went to school. And, and, and I guess uh, elementary and junior high. So here's Detective Rosa Rodriguez that met me at the 7-Eleven when I crawled out after being ambushed and shot, right? One of the main players here. And, and uh, cl actually, she's the one that closed this case. She testified that I was delusional in court. This is her buddy, Rosa Rodriguez. And come to find out who's, the, who's, the, who's her friend, her lifelong friend. And, and, you know, and if her friend rules my murder and accident, then it adds another half million dollars. Okay, so that's what the point of that is. The big prize was my paid-for home, which uh, which have been said by had tunnels under it and is near a million dollar underground facility that's suspected hosted prostitution and pedophile parties. Okay, and I'm only doing one graphic here, but there's multiple. There's recorded phone calls, other people's uh, screenshots, but you know, this conversation's with a person named Rhonda Denman Rogers and I'm saying my home's sitting on top of some underground facility, which is very important, at least near this facility, and Rhonda Denman Rogers said, yes, I know it's a half block away. She didn't say it's 2.5 blocks away. She didn't say it's 5 
five blocks away. She knew exactly where it was, a half block away. And and actually, the woman on the phone said there's four three-bedroom homes, 25 foot deep, each costing a million apiece. And, I, and I'm, I believe, based on Google Maps, one of them is probably in my backyard. And that might be where that young girl was murdered at the 2010 also party, because I believe them parties were going on there. Moving on. My phone lines were cut before I was ambushed and shot from point blank range by somebody under my home. I crawled out on my hands and knees to save my life. This failed murder was ruled an accident, and the case was closed by her friend that she went to elementary school with, Rosa Rodriguez, Detective Rosa Rodriguez. And this is a, a picture that's right from my security camera, okay? And you'd see me crawling out. Now, the reason I crawled out is because my phone lines were cut. You know, I had no communication. My cell phone had been stolen. My phone lines cut. And what this graphic is flashing up there on the screen, what it's saying is, is MPD officers Davis, Diggy, Chatwell, Angel, and Hell were shown to be at or in my home but not seen on these cameras, the one that's taking this picture right here, uh, uh, which told me they were under my home. The evidence shows that somebody under my home shot me by surprise, okay? And and so that's the, uh, the next comment. Eight months after the murder attempt, I was contacted by Arthur Welch, who told me that I was dating the ex-wife during this time. He asked me if I thought she had anything to do with the shooting, and I told him that I thought she was out of town at the time, but I knew... Uh, but, but I thought she knew who did it. He then tells me he thought she had a lot to do with different things she said, and that she threatened to have him killed too. Okay, this is court testimony. This was this was submitted in in the protective order hearing in court. A copy of this from a, a Facebook private message. And I didn't know Arthur Welch. He just contacted me out of the blue eight months after I was shot. He says, "Do you think she had anything to do with the shooting? I dated her for a short time here in Lubbock." And she threatened to have me killed, okay? And I said, I'm pretty sure that she was in Lubbock at the time, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Arthur Wells says, well, I think she had a lot to do with it from the things she said. And I'm so never will trust her, okay? And so, and once again, that's not Buddy saying he said. I, I mean, I got a print screen. And and when it come out in court testimony, she, she, uh, she you know, of course, she was surprised that we had that. And then, but she admitted that, yes, that was her boyfriend. Okay. I just recently saw in the police report from the night of the murder attempt, which had been withheld from me for seven years, that MPD officer Matt Davis tried to call my ex-wife two times an hour after I was seen crawling out. Okay, and this is just part of the of the long withheld police report from the night of the the murder attempt. Okay, and and at the top you can see where I added in at twenty three forty two MPD officer Matt Davis tried to contact my ex-wife twice. That's down here on the bottom twenty three forty two. Per 2862, which is Matt Davis, tried to contact Mrs. Webb, uh, who was the ex-wife, and on previous calls, a no answer with two attempts. Okay, so so I found that very interesting, and this and I crawled out at 1042 and 1142, Matt Davis is there trying to, now remember Matt Davis is on scene at my house at, at uh, where, where are we at? 11.03 right here, okay? 11.03 is on scene at my house, okay? Well, Woodward and Naylor showed up on the cameras 11.01, and nobody and the, and the cameras wasn't disabled 11.22. Nobody else was seen arriving. Nobody was seen going in. And so that's where we're, we're you know, it's obvious Matt Davis was under my home, okay? And, and one of the very first here... And so, and the question is that maybe I was shot by Matt Davis, you know, that, that, that's a very good, maybe, maybe the ex-wife was working with Matt Davis. Do they know each other? These are questions need to be answered by legitimate law enforcement. I did research one online, Matt Davis with the MPD, uh, uh, the sergeant MPD officer that mysteriously quit the police force on the same month of protective order after only working 12 years. After, okay. So here it is, Matt Davis right here. This is LinkedIn profile, and it's showing here, Sergeant Detective City of Midland, and he quits in December 2013. And guess what happened in December 2013? My attorney says, we're submitting this evidence from Arthur Welch saying where, where he was, he says that he believes the ex-wife had a lot to do with the shooting from the things she said. And, you know, and that pretty much destroyed their whole case right there because it was absurdity anyway to file that protective order. I hadn't seen her, talked to her in a year and a half. She lived a hundred miles away. The report showed the MPD officer Matt Davis is at my home at 11.03 but wasn't seen on camera. Woodward and Naylor were seen arriving at 11.01 but they were not the only ones. This told me that it was under my home. I was ambushed and shot by somebody under my home. Okay, and then I'm showing that same police report again up there. 
And I'm calling out the names here. And here I added Joe Ramirez. See, Joe Ramirez was called in as a backer. He was never shown as an on-scene. But, but it's very possible that he was on-scene and it didn't get logged. So we could have another... Uh, another police officer, Joe Ramirez, and and so that's maybe legitimate police, the ones that are you know are not involved in sneaking into homes or or, or uh, covering up capital attempted murders might want to ask these questions. And this is when the cameras were disabled at eleven twenty two. Now remember, uh, Naylor and Woodward arrive at eleven o one and eleven twenty two. The cameras are disabled. Nobody else was seen arriving, and nobody was seen going in the door. But we got these five or six officers that are listed as being at or in my home, and they're not seen on camera. That's what told me they were under my home. Okay, and then now, so let's go. A former resident, Ricky Ronaldo, told me that him and his brother used to go in the tunnels under my home when they lived here. Now, keep in mind, about two weeks before I'm ambushed and shot, I, I contacted the El Paso. DEA, then the Midland DEA, and I reported a suspected smuggling tunnel to this house. Here's what Ricky said. I used to live in that house years ago. I'm like, oh yeah, you know? He says, yeah, when I was a kid, there were tunnels under the house. Me and my brother would always go down there. Okay, this is where obviously Davis and Dickey and, and them other police officers, how, how come they were in or at my house, but they were not seen, they were under my house, and very possibly they're the ones that tried to murder me. They're the ones that loaded their guns, drove from their home to my home, cut my phone lines, and shot me. We don't know that, but we need somebody to start asking some questions, because, uh, because if they'll break into my home and murder me, they'll break into your home and murder you. Okay, right now we got some killers out there that have been walking free for way too long. These books show that if her lifelong friend, MBD Detective Rosa Rodriguez, would rule my murder and accident, that she would get around $650,000 in cash assets instead of getting nothing from a short marriage, ending under allegations that she's working for a prostitution ring. Okay, and, and that's what this meme about. This is some of the court transcript uh, from the protective order hearing. And, and, um, and I'm the one that that's on the stand now. Has so and so ever in, indicated to you that she did that she doesn't want to have any contact with you? Not that I know of. Not until I got this protective order. Okay, I hadn't talked to her in a year and a half. Now, previously you said that you had suspected of her being a prostitute. Do you recall in December 2011 speaking to her about that? Yes, there were a few conversations. I'm answering, and we did, like I say, argue over this point several times. She came in one day and she said they pay you by the hour, the minute, or the day, and I just worked two days and I'm tired. And, and and another conversation. And by the way, she she's a uh, a nurse, so she isn't paid by the minute. So she told me they pay you by they pay you by the hour, the minute, or the day. Okay, and so I suspected that was for prostitution. Also, if you want to say accused her, accused her her breath of smelling like semen, you know. And then another on another conversation that was reverenced in the order was, oh, I want to know who the pimps, the tricks, and the drug dealers are. And she said it's a family business. Okay. Now, now keep in mind that uh, I found out later uh, from her actually that her brother-in-law was the uh, ER doctor at the hospital, and that's when the X-rays were faked. And remember, she's the one that told me a couple of weeks, you know, while I was still married, that um, the secret is a group of doctors are killing people for profit. And another interesting thing is, I was down at the courthouse and I was looking up property records uh, for the deed history of of this house and the other owners in this, uh, you know, in my small cul-de-sac, and I've noticed that the um, that the builder of my house, Tabor Construction, had an address on Mark Lane. And so I went and looked up the deed history for that house and come to find out the ER doctor, her brother-in-law, or my brother-in-law, uh, used to own the same house as the builders of my house. And so that made me wonder if he knew about this home being rigged with hidden access and then used for crime and racketeering and murder and, and human traffic and all that. Okay. That's another story, okay? And then the last post, and I'll end this out. I think we can all agree that since I wasn't shot with my gun, then somebody came to my home and shot me. That is capital attempted murder at your home, and it's capital attempted murder at my home. See, the law can't apply just at one home. It has to apply to all homes. They loaded their guns and drove from their home to my home to murder me. Here's just some proof of this fact. The, si the size of pellets removed from my foot per the lab were 2.5 si sizes different than what was in my gun, proving that I wasn't shot with my gun. Okay, so, so that's 
that's enough to be used in court right there. That's ballistic evidence. The surgeon reported that he removed a large amount of plastic from my foot, which would not be found had I been shot with my gun. Once again, Lisa Rogers stated that I shot with a 45 handgun. Remember, these corrupt police are trying to say I shot with a 12 gauge, and that's not what happened. Triple proof shows my x rays were faked at the hospital. I have videos and proof on that. A group of corrupt police were caught on camera covering up the murder attempt. It took six years and $2,000 to get them identified. That never happened before in the history of America. Crime victim had to offer a reward to get police identified. Arthur West tells me that he believes the ex wife had a lot to do with shooting the things she said, and she threatened to have him killed too. I reported somebody in my attic to the police a year before I was shot with burglar alarms going off in my attic, and now people all over Midland, Odessa, many other states are reporting these same unique crimes. And remember, I've got recorded police scanner calls and emails and phone calls uh, showing that. I reported suspected tunnel to the DEA from phone number 432-209-6492 two weeks before I was ambushed and shot by somebody under my home. Now multiple people are documented saying that tunnels and or underground facilities near my home. One person was sickly recorded saying that four three-bedroom homes, 25 foot deep, each costing over a million each were here and they were having pedophile parties there. That's a video called Million Dollar Underground Homes. It's a recorded phone call. And what I have here is a lab report from the hospital, okay, from my medical records, and it's showing that the the point three si size it was centimeters was the size of the pellets removed from my foot. Here's here's the uh, the shot shell. This is actually one of my shot shells right here uh, that that was turned over to the. Uh, uh, to law enforcement and so they have they have that now and you can see here it's two and a half sizes different and so basically what that this is only one piece of evidence but you know what it comes down to like here you got a guy with the 22 and here's a guy over here shot with a 45 did the guy with 22 shoot the guy with 45 no we know that because of ballistic, ballistic evidence was i shot with my gun no because ballistic evidence proves it and that's only one piece of evidence this this is just uh the amount of evidence here is to the level of absurdity. This was a premeditated, for-profit, capital-tempted murder. And, and, and uh, it's time to restore uh, rule of law. Uh, it, I mean, it, we're harming the, the trust in our police force and our justice system by this obstruction of justice. Buddy Webb, Midland, Texas.